John Bolger with Premier Guitar. I'm here with Parker Griggs of the band Radio Moscow. Parker, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, man. Good to see you. Hey, let's start talking about this guitar. This is your number one for years now, right? Uh, for live, yeah. And then yeah. in the studio, I use a bunch of different stuff, but this yeah. is the one I take out on the road. Cool. Let's hear all about it. It's uh, just a newer Strat, an American Deluxe. Um, like, what year is it? Do you do you know? Right, 2000. 13 or oh something. really wow man it's you put new. some miles on it yeah. yeah yeah okay and is it stock or uh, or have you made any adjustments to it no it's just stock um, it's got that thing that's it's busted but I, <laughs> I don't mind I think it sounds terrible with that push <laughs> <in>, so. <laughs> that's great yeah. what does that that's right I can't remember what those things do is it like a mid boost or something but whatever it is something it yeah makes it sound bad <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great so basically stock American standard and uh, what string gauges do you do you run on it uh, nines just nines? they're good for the lead stuff sure sure and uh, what brand um, Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball, okay. And I like you keep the in true rock and roll fashion. You've got the eye poker, uh, <laughs> like that. Just laziness, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It keeps it excited. Never know if you're going to blind somebody on a, <laughs> a gig. That's great. Okay, so this is your number one uh, road guitar. And in the studio, you said you kind of switch it up with whatever fits the song. Yeah, I've got a lot of older, um, like 50s and 60s electrics that I oh, use cool. for the recording. Like Supros and silver tones and harmonies. And yeah, neat. Stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, very cool. They have a cool tone. Well, fifth, uh, speaking of, of vintage, your amps are really cool. Let's talk about this. What you got going? What madness you have back here? Oh, uh, well, I've got this is a tube reverb unit. It's an Alamo. Wow. And then it's running up to the Gibson Titan. So, okay, so the Alamo, I'm not even, I've never even seen one of those. Is that just a. Uh, some obscure company from back in the day? Yeah, they were based out of San Antonio, Texas. And oh, cool. Well, that makes sense, Alamo, okay. They made pretty good amps. They were trying to compete with Fender, but then didn't make it. But, huh. uh, and this is, do you know what year that is? I think it's a 64, 65. Oh, very cool. Okay, so you're running into that, and that goes into this Gibson Titan. Yep, and that's a uh, 67. Wow. And it's like a... Four six L six, so around eighty to hundred watts. Wow, yeah, and that is—is is that more of your clean or dirty sound, or is it? It's it's pretty clean. It's just really loud and lots of headroom. Yeah, yeah, it, it it seems very present. That's great. Okay, so that's your main. That's and that's running into these two Marshall four twelves. Yep. Or yep. actually, I'm just using the top one. Using the top one. Okay. And then. Uh, that thing down here for the bottom. Okay, yeah, so, okay. So, Titan's running into this Marshall 412, and this is um, a backline 412 for today, right? Yeah, we're borrowing it from uh, Amplified Heat, who we're oh. on the road with. Oh, cool. Um, and normally, do you do you run it into a 412, your own 412, or a? Yeah, I normally run that into, uh, yeah, like I got a Marshall 412 back home. And yeah. Uh, like uh, greenbacks or, or what speakers do you normally run? Um, I'm not sure what's in there. Whatever but I, came in it. Yeah. Yeah. I like the old Jensen's though. Usually. The stuff. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that. That makes sense. Okay. So Gibson Titan into a Marshall, and then over here we've got a Dan. Is that a Dan Electro? A DS100. Wow, it cool. Was their biggest, uh, loudest amp they made, and it's a 4.6L6 as well, so around 100 watts. Wow, in that little head. Yeah. Huh. Oh, how cool. That thing's great. It's got six 10-inch speakers. They're Jensen's. And six 10-inch speakers in that. Wow. Okay. It's oh. kind of the same as, 
1485 silver tone, but it's like the Dan Electro. Oh, okay. Housed in the Dan Electro style. Yeah. All right, great. And so verbs in that, and this is dry? Yeah, it's got a reverb, but it's really funky. It's pretty weird. Okay, so cool. So I just use it dry. So what we're hearing is a combination of the of the both. It's not. It's both both on all the time. Yep. Okay. Cool. And the rest of the tone is coming from this pedal board. Let's uh, talk about that. Cool. Okay, we're at your pedal board now. Tell me what how the signal is flowing. Uh, well, I first go into this Wawa, and it's a uh, BBE brand. Um, oh, okay. They're pretty affordable, but it sounds really good. It's uh, supposedly made to the specs of like uh, one of the Thomas Organ. Uh, was from the 60s. Oh, cool. It's supposed to be a direct clone, and uh, yeah, I like it a lot better than like the crybabies and stuff. It's got more range. Oh, cool. Better. Okay. Yeah, show me a little bit of that thing. Cool. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so from there you're going into what's the next in the row? Uh, then it goes to uh, this phase 90, which phase is 90. pretty standard pedal. Oh, sure, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, they sound cool. They're That's yeah, they're great. cool. Okay, and from the phase 90, what do you hit? Then it's going to this uh, fuzz phase. And okay. I normally have like a Maserite fuzz right reissue, but it busted, so this is kind of temporary. And uh, it's it's the cat eye? Oh, no, no, the fuzz face. Okay. Yeah, the blue one. Yeah, okay, cool. It, it's all right. It's not trebly enough for what I'd like, but it's just kind of a temporary thing. Sure. That's yeah, pretty wooly and heavy. And that's just dimed all the way up. Yeah. Much. Okay. Well, it's funny because it doesn't give you a huge volume spike, but no, it does really fuzz it out. Yeah. Might even take it down a little. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it almost feels like it does. That's that's really interesting. That's weird. Okay, from the fuzz face, uh, you hit the hybrid fuzz, cat's eye, is that right? Yeah, it's got both uh, silicon and uh, germanium, so it's a, it's got a little more range than that, but it's still a little... Let's hear that taste. Let's do a taste test. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, okay. that one sounds good. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. And then from there into the the Boss DD7. Yep. And I kind of run that one like a, just a, not a long echo, real close together and just, just like a one echo, so it's... It's kind of close together. Yeah, cool. And from there, it hits. Uh, is it the, go into the tube screamer next? Uh, yeah, and that one's pretty much on all the time. Oh, really? Just leave that on all the time? Okay. Just to get these guys more distorted. But sure. Yeah, it's like the TS808, so it's got yeah. the older style one. And yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. And then from there, the Dan Electro, right? Yeah, this one's pretty cool. It's more of a longer echo, different from the other. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. You, for the whole trippy hippie thing, that's great. Yeah. And then uh, the the uh, tuner, gotta have it. Got, yeah. Yeah. And then the radio, what's the deal on that, on the, your uh, your big shot? It's just so I can run to, to all these things oh, at the okay. same time. And you can switch in between them and stuff. Do you ever switch or just keep them kind of both running yeah, all the time? Yeah, just keep them at the same time. Yeah, yeah, more is more. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. Well, I, yeah, I love it. I love the whole dirty, rocker, hippie, trippy thing. That's great. <laughs> It's great. Well, hey, man, thanks for joining us. I know you guys have had thanks a... Thanks for having us. You just blew in. You drove all the way here, and then you're out to the next one after that. Out on for another couple of weeks, is that it? Yeah, about two and a half. Yeah, good for you, man. All right, well, congrats. Okay, now we're with Anthony Meyer, the bass player for Radio Moscow. Anthony, Hello. thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, pleasure. Let's hear about this cool Rick. All right, so this is a 2004 4003. Um, I got this in about 2010. Oh, cool! From a from an old friend from high school who used to be in a kick-ass uh, kind of 70s style rock band. But um, yeah, it was just had had some miles on it from before, and then I, yeah. I eventually bought it off him when he kind of put it down for a while. Cool. So, yeah, man. Some there's history. something about this Rick's. Why did you choose the Rick kind of for the way they? that kind of the way they punch through there's like a high yeah, yeah, end yeah. thing to it I did I also love how they look and then once I first started playing it I just fell in love with like the neck and it's so easy did you feel like what did you play before the Rick uh, I was playing like a Gibson SG bass okay was there yeah. much of an adjustment to oh it's way different yeah Yeah. yeah. the only time I've played those they're, they feel so different yeah you they're, kinda they're have different to than the most bases yeah yeah got it takes a little to get used to it but yeah it's you know. more your right hand has to adjust than yeah. your, your left yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I don't use the, the pickup cover too that's yeah because good idea that just gets in the way of oh. like because I play with my fingers right a lot of people who play Ricks play with picks but yeah and it seems to kind of that's what I could never get used to that, that yeah it's I like go kind of like right in the middle yeah Sometimes yeah very cool very cool and so um, setting wise do you find you're like I see right now you're in the middle Position. Usually there for a, it's a little uh, more midi. Yeah. And it's a little more low. Yeah, when you want to get it really muddy. Yeah. yeah. That's great. But I, I'd say it's, yeah. Lives around there. Mm -hmm. uh, what strings do you run on this? Uh, these are D'Addario uh, round wounds. Um, just regular size. Yeah. Uh, are you in standard tuning? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it's that's a cool choice for a three piece because it really does cut through. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. Because you guys, uh, it's a it's a really kind of big raucous, you know, wall of yeah. It's, sounds. These guys that, play really loud too, yeah, inside. Yeah, you guys. We gotta so keep loud. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Speaking of loud, uh, let's talk about this amp. What do you what do you run in this orange? Uh, this is an orange eighty two hundred Mark three. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I got this from a guy in LA. Actually, I have an, in, I had, I got this before. I got, uh, like a little endorsement through Orange. Oh, okay. I already had it before. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. It's really warm. It's got a lot of bottom end, too. Yeah. And, uh, it's powerful. And loud. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you're throwing out some, some serious, uh, serious low end. Uh, and today, this is a, this is a backline cabs for you yeah. these these two old uh, fender 15 cabs are you running into both these uh no because they're actually both uh four ohms oh okay um so i can only use one of them yeah yeah um but at home i have two eight ohm cabs you, wh what are you both. what are your cabs that you normally uh have? i have an orange uh 410 and uh, 115 both with eminence speakers in them oh great yeah so that was like combined to four yeah that's a great combination just one clean mm -hmm. little stack behind you yeah, but right now I'm using this one. I believe there's a, I think there's two PV uh, Black Widow 15 inch speakers in there. Yeah. But it sounds good. It's pretty, it's different from mine, but I like it. I got, I've gotten used to it. Yeah. So, and you guys have been on this tour just doing that sharing cabs for, uh, for a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, the whole time. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, 
yeah, it works out. It's yeah. convenient. Well, let's talk about your very modest pedal arrangement you have up here. Uh, looks like you're running a Tube Screamer. Yeah, that's a, that's like the old, uh, I think they made it in 84, but it's a Ibanez Super Tube Screamer. It's like a pretty rare one. Yeah, let's hear that, uh, let's hear that bad boy. Okay. I think I lost a filling when you, when you <laughs> I just rattled it loose. <laughs> yeah, that's great, man. Okay, and then uh, the compressor, that's the old Ibanez. CP8352, uh, I don't know, it's another yeah. ran random, old, rare kind of compressor. I used yeah. to work for this uh, guy who inherited a vintage guitar collection after his dad passed away and oh. I was working for him for two years and basically acquired these. Oh, well, that's great. And like, just started using them. And yeah. yeah, okay, I, let's, I let's hear that thing. On this stage, you can feel that in your feet, right? <laughs> I mean, you're, it's like massaging my feet. That's great. Wait, well, hey, man, I love it. Love the whole dirty rocker thing. You guys sound great. <laughs> right on. Enjoy the tour. Good hey, seeing cheers. you. Pleasure. Till next time. Adios. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.